Hello, this is National Chess Master Coach Bill. I'm here at chess.com and I'm covering a simultaneous being given by Grandmaster Sam Chessmood, also known by his real name of Sam Belter Chahakian, and I hope I said that right. My uh, language is not my best asset, but uh, he's giving a little simultaneous here, 25 minutes per move, plus a five second increment. And uh, we have five games going on. Uh, we hope for more, but uh, if you don't show up, you don't play. And one person uh, selected the wrong time control. Uh, you had to set the right time control, so I'm not going to cover that game here. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's kind of look around here. All right, we have, looks to be like a four knights game here. Yep, four knights. And this one, what's happening here? This one's going kind of quick. Uh, take your time, guys. Okay, so... Looks like we have the Karo Khan defense. Uh, interesting, knight d2 is strategically more accurate than knight c3. That's a long story beyond the scope of this. And this is all theory. Uh, now, usually black takes, uh, but here, we're not, I'm not going to argue with the Grandmaster. He's playing a different line. Okay, so uh, game is pretty much dead even. Now, white elects to take and double the pawns. So, and the c5 break is, is something common. White would like to get d5 in, but it doesn't look, look like he can here. So he just reinforces on the d file, and, uh, you know, white has a queenside pawn majority, uh, black has a double pawn. So, you know, right now we can say that uh, white is doing okay, but he's going a little quick. We, we're going to progress here, see some more exchanges. And now he's putting the question to this pawn on b2. Um, black, white can maybe play rook d2 or rook e2 to defend. Um, it seems to be a solid play. I'm going to move on to another game that I'm only able to play rook e2. Okay, so looks like black has a satisfactory position. Uh, let's look on to another one here. Okay, what happened here? See what opening their play. Okay, we have the Philidor defense. Now, this is bishop b5. I, I teach this to my students how to handle this. Then you take, takes back, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, and white castles long, black castles short, and white starts an attack. And if you look at uh, Al Yekin's, uh book on his, his games in volume one somewhere around 1918 he had a game with this he started this uh, pawn storm and black needed to start his pawn storm on the queen side and he failed uh, the whole game blew up on him now you can win it rather quickly so let's see let's see how close this comes okay so and look at this well well this is this is a little inaccurate uh, because you're blocking the bishop in. That may be, yeah, it's playable, but I don't, I don't like the idea of blocking the bishop in. Okay, so now this takes away the best square from the knight, so black's, black's going to have a little trouble untangling his pieces here. And now his kingside is getting weakened, so black will definitely have to castle queenside here. So that's an interesting setup by black. I've never seen it before. Okay, found a place for his bishop. And watch your queen. Okay, now the knight is unprotected. We have to watch for tactics. Uh, but uh, time to slow down uh, and, and find some good moves. Okay, let's look at this one here. Uh, what's happening here? Got a French defense. Okay, this is maybe the more accurate avoids the complications of the McCutcheon, which is certainly an interesting line. And yeah, we're still here. Okay, uh, so now I think the most accurate move, it goes something like F, no, no, no. Uh, knight D2, or Knight e, C D E2, because after C5, you want to be able to maintain your your pawn chain, keep, keep the base here protected, or, or in place, I should say. Uh, and then I've seen a lot of these variations where uh, this French bishop just kind of gives black a hard time if they get to an end game. So f4 might be a little too quick. I don't know all the lines. 
but c5 is the wanted response but you know the grandmaster is playing it so we're going to take his word for it okay so so he, he, he his pawn chain is going to be broken uh, one of the, but he, he's going to maintain on e5 but one of the drawbacks of the f4 idea right away is it limits the scope of this bishop it also softens up this diagonal okay so the game seems even it's I'm sure it's still theory uh, and black is expanding on the queen side and so neither neither side has very good bishops here uh, white will strive to play f5 at some point uh, black is kind of spent what he should have done or could have done here his play is kind of diminished it might have been more accurate to trade uh, even though white maintains the strong point uh, you know uh, might have been a little more accurate okay so g6 to uh, that's a good move to thwart this but eventually white may be playing g4 and f5 which could expose his own king to danger okay oops hitting the wrong buttons okay g6 king back okay so now uh, black is saying I'm just gonna sit here and keep this position closed and uh, you know if you want to expand on the uh, king side uh, I'm gonna be ready and, and my king is gonna eventually find shelter over in this side of the board so it should be an interesting interesting game here okay so they're actually trying to take over the board here <laughs> wow but I guess black should be casting queen side here momentarily uh, you know but you know this position is rather interesting the pawns are kind of locked up uh, what kind of pawn breaks are there well you know white has you know maybe this kind of play at some point and this is good that he's kept the pawns intact because uh, you know black is kind of running out of ideas to maneuver his pawns and we had one game end what happened here oopsie we have a uh, we have a blunder okay you don't want to move fast I just made a video for you and I talked to you about moving fast okay so now here uh, black could have played this center four trick and then white can play the uh, Frankenstein dragon the variation look it up it's crazy uh, King let's see wait uh, knight takes uh, bishop takes is that it no no knight no it's knight takes queen h5 that's right Here, look it up okay yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff in there so it's a quiet Vienna game here kind of transposed into the four knights it's very symmetrical one of the problems with symmetrical positions is that you can only copy your opponent so long eventually there comes a move that you cannot duplicate so in this particular formation we have possibilities that either side might put the bishop pin the knight okay and uh, and then uh, follow up and try to shatter the pawn structure so sometimes uh, when both sides need to stop and play this move as, as horrible as these moves are uh, but it's a very symmetrical, very drawish position. So uh, white opts to seize, for the, seize the bishop there. And, you know, the game's even. And now he takes some preventative measures because eventually you want to uh, activate this rook and you don't want a problem to be here. This also preserves a square for the bishop to retreat to and white can maintain the two bishops. That's the idea there. Okay, so now here comes a pin. Now this is a threat, so c3 is a common remedy but it does weaken white's b3 square a little bit okay so that's another way and now probably the best place for this bishop to go to is right here and then he hopes that he takes and even though black has two sets of double pawns he has some attacking chances on the f file okay so now the bishop is gonna be kind of buried and it doesn't have a whole lot of activity okay and Whoopsie, hit the wrong button. Okay, that's easy to fix. Um, just a second. I'll find her here. Bishop h4, okay. So I don't quite understand knight a7. So here, at some point, black needs to find out where he wants to put his king. You, I call it doing, getting the chore done. You've got to get your king safe, okay? Uh, if you don't get your king safe, you're going to get... Uh, 
you're going to get checkmated, okay? <laughs> you're you're going to be subject to an attack. When I was a younger player, even though I had read books and knew what to do, sometimes I would get over ambitious in my games. I would delay castling, figure that would give me an extra tempo to conduct my attack. And, and if I was playing a stronger player, guess what happened? I, I left my uh, I left my king in the center, and I was the one that got attacked. And things didn't work out too well. So we got to get castled. Okay, so knight a7. Don't quite understand that. Uh, where's the knight going? Uh, it's not going to b5. It goes to c8. It can get to here. Then where's it going? Back to c6. You know, I mean, the castling was better. Okay. Uh, maybe black is getting ready to cast the queen side here. And now black is trying to attack the white king before... Before he's completed his development, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna launch a pawn storm against white, you know, you want uh, you want your rooks connected. Okay, that closed off the uh, h file, okay. and now he's still trying to open up lines. But you know, you have to have your king safe before you open up lines. To get those rooks connected, and now here comes a blunder. So, you know, obviously for moving fast, see, look, three seconds. Uh, well, actually, two seconds. Two seconds on a move when you have an average of 40 seconds a move. I just made a video and discussed this with you. Uh, you know, <laughs> trying to help you, okay? I'm not picking on you. I'm trying to help you. You've got to slow down. Or you, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, the Grandmaster's going to see this. You know, get away with it against somebody else, but they're not here. Now, just a simple matter of, of, of converting the point. Okay, so, oops, there goes the queen, too. You know, it's a poison square here. Okay, you, you, <laughs> you, you put a rook there, then you put your queen there. So, uh, how much time on the move? Well, uh, instant. You know, you pre-moved or something uh, because your clock went up five seconds. You have a five-second increment. Okay, so we're going to close this game down and uh, slow down. You'll do well, okay? You gotta play slow. You know, the, the grandmasters can play blitz quick. That's because they're good. You know, they can handle it. Uh, we, we, we ordinary mortals gotta take our time and get really strong at chess before we can play a good blitz game. Okay. Let's so kind of bounce around here. Let's see here. Well, this one's already down to an end game. Uh, okay. Let's kind of whoops. Let's kind of refresh this thing. Okay. So we have four knights. Kind of like a real Lopez Steinitz defense. Okay, chooses to keep the bishop on the board. Rather than trade it off. And, you know, the game seems equal. Now, this is uh, what's known as a semi open position. Let me explain that. Uh, both sides have a center pawn. Uh, so, semi is prefix meaning half. Uh, white has half the D file to work with, black has half the E file to work with. In an excellent book I read all those years ago, way back in high school. 1972-73 was a book by Grandmaster Reuben Fine, who in his prime was a contender for the World Championship, one easily within the top five of the world, and arguably with the top three. He tied for a uh, tournament called Avro in Holland in 1938. He tied for, with Paul Carey's uh, for the right to challenge Aliakin for the World Championship, and Carey's won on tie breaks. World War II got in the way, then when they Decided to have a tournament in 1948 after Alyekin died. Uh, uh, Fine uh, declined to play because he was busy uh, working on his profession as a, as a psychologist. Or, so, you know, he just never became world champion. Uh, but he was certainly one of the best players of, of his era. Uh, but he wrote a book, several books. Uh, one of them was The Middle Game in Chess. And he has a lot of work discussing why the open position is better for white. I mean, the, the semi-open is a little better for white. It preserves the advantage of the fir first move. And suffice it to say, it has to do with the fact that white's pawn, center pawn is controlling the uh, fifth rank, and black's is only controlling its fourth rank. So, strategically, white's a little better here. Uh, and, now, I don't necessarily like this one exchange here. Okay, because why give up the bishop pair? Unless you have something in mind, maybe. Uh, and then, again, you know, we can look and see. The move is 
I don't know, it only shows me times when we're over. I'm not sure how much time he's taking on the move. But you can check that later. If you, you know, you have 40 seconds of move, okay? 40. And you'll still be okay. <laughs> and sometimes you can move quick, but sometimes you have to stop and think. So white's advantage here is based on just having the bishop pair. Uh, now black opts to open up the position, which might be strategically incorrect, because this will in turn give the white bishops more scope. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, I'm looking at a, at a tactic to uh, steal a pawn. The yeah, bishop takes here. If queen takes, you know, we can take this and reinforce. So white might be winning a pawn here. He chooses not to. What do I know? We're going to take the grandmaster's word word for it. Okay. Take. Let's see. Takes. 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 Oh, you're going to drop this pawn down here. Okay. So anyway, uh, looking for trades. The game seems about even with white enjoying the advantage of the bishop pair. Okay, relying on the pin, he can't take. Reinforcing. Now he gives back the bishop to get this. So looks like black has played it well. Uh, you know, it's a uh, potentially even game. Now we're going to bishop ending. So who's better here? That's a very good question. Um, I have to call it even. Uh, you know, black has a queen side pawn majority, but his pass pawn would come in the D file. White has a king side pawn majority that'll come here. A couple of things are working against black. Uh, four of his six pawns are on the color of his bishop, but the same thing could be said about white. Um, four pawns are on the color of his bishop. That means your bishop bumps into those things. It means if you're if they get attacked by the enemy bishop, you might have to protect him with your bishop. And would you rather be attacking or defending? Okay, goes without saying. So let's go forward and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm not too sure about b4, uh, but the Grandmaster is playing it. I mean, it's not a move I would play. Uh, <laughs> it just seems to weaken the, the pawn structure a little bit. But but it's, but at the same time, it, it, it actually makes a great deal of positional sense. So let me kind of interject something. This is a move I wouldn't expect right away, but now that I see it, it's a wonderful move. Now, can you tell me why? Okay, well, it's simple. Uh, it is putting it on a dark square, and it's meant to restrain the move c5 by black. Okay, uh, even though it weakens these squares, if if it prevents black from playing uh, his bishop here, I'm sorry, his bishop, I'm dyslexic, putting his pawn here, because it'll hang a6, and the reason black would want to put a pawn on b6 is to play c5, and try to grab some space, but, but, uh, uh, since it hangs this pawn, that's no good. Now, black has the interesting move here, bishop b5, and he says, let's go down to a king and pawn ending, and that may very well be a draw with correct play. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's it's just a choice there, but this is the time, you know, you have a lot of time on your clock. Sit there and evaluate it. Uh, you know, because this move did have a certain weakening tendency to it. It weakened these squares. And, and black may very well have the better game if he plays bishop b5 here. They play bishop a4 to attack a pawn. And now he doesn't see it. So, and that's still there. We can force a trade of the bishop. Uh, you know, the, the grandmaster is playing a pretty quick time control, so maybe things are happening. Now that's good. Get the pawn on a dark square. Okay. Uh, well, you know, you're totally not going for my idea. That's probably a draw. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Now, now uh, look what's changed over the last several moves. At one time, black had four pawns on light squares, and he still does. And at the same time, white had four pawns on light squares. Now only has one. So, so the grandmaster has improved his position here due to some inaccurate play by black, and uh, white stands better. But is it enough to win? We'll have to see. Okay. Now he chooses to go to light square, trying to grab more space. Okay. Now that hangs this pawn, and there it goes. So, you know, probably moving too fast. You can't move too fast against the Grandmaster, especially when you have lots of time on your clock. 
Okay, so uh, for White to win this, he's going to have to uh, promote, uh, get a pass pawn and promote that pawn, right? Okay, uh, any bishop trade will give uh, Black a losing king and pawn ending. Uh, this pawn is on a light square and is a potential target, so White can tie him down here. Let's watch the Grandmaster's technique to win this, because I'm certain, you know, I'm certain he'll find a way. Okay, so here's an undermining move he can't take because he'll drop his, he'll drop his bishop. So here White's trying to get a pass pawn here and drive this king further back and make this pawn a target. Now here we're putting a pawn on a light square again. So it's possible this bishop may end up over here at some point and steal a couple of pawns. Although it doesn't always work. Uh, like let's just imagine this bishop there. The king can come here and if you take this the king steps over to f7 and the bishop is trapped. Or is it? You know, sometimes it can, there's little pin tricks and stuff to get out. But uh, this is, well, that went one. But here, here's here's the victim, chess king. Okay, look at the clock. 19 minutes left on your clock. 19 minutes. You wasted a lot of time. You're, you know, you can't play blitz chess when you have 40 seconds of move. That's why we had this time control for you. Okay, so let's back up. And uh, you know, I put in the notes, you know, take your time. I told what you had, you know. You got you to gotta learn the right way. Okay, so we'll just back up. We'll go through, catch up where we were. So there's the pass pawn. And now this is coming. Eventually we'll get a pass pawn over on this side of the board. This pawn is tied down. This is a perfect technique by the Grandmaster. You know, black went from a potential draw, and there goes d5. Kaboom, you can't trade. Well, that, that means that that's the game. So, it's just a matter of, of uh, now you have to move this pawn. <laughs> You're going to get made in just a few quick moves. See? And it's all over. Okay, thanks for playing. Okay, let's see what happened here. Black won this. This strikes two games going left, two games left. Okay, Black's doing a good job on the time here, but still a little fast. Uh, I mean, White is. See, Black is ahead two pawns, though. How did this happen? How did this happen? So this came out of that Karo Khan, as I recall. Um, okay, let's see now. It looked like Black had a reasonable game here, and here he parts with the bishop. Um, looks even. Now, here, if you don't take, uh, you're going to get it. You're going to drop a pawn. If you reinforce, you're going to have an isolated. So one possible move is to bring the knight back here, so that if the rook takes, you can take back with the knight. Okay, so this just basically lets White have the D file for what it's worth. White is now ready to penetrate to the seventh rank. Maybe drop a knight in here, although that, that could get him pinned. Let's go forward. Okay, now this this creates weaknesses right here and right here. But the Grandmaster's playing it. So, I mean, these are not moves I would necessarily consider, and that's happened uh, more than once in this uh, in this session. He's playing moves that I, ugh, I don't want to do that. Um, You've all heard of, I hope you've heard of Jeremy Silman in his uh, fourth edition or volume four of uh, How to Reassess Your Chess. At one point in the book, he says, you know, a lot of times we tell ourselves we can't play a move. He says, I challenge you, basically says this, I challenge you to set a little trigger off in your mind that every time you, you bring, you, you're playing chess and, and you see that you can't play a move, ask yourself if you can. You will often find that that's exactly what you can do. You can, and uh, if you if you do that, you, can, you, know, you find out you can when you're afraid of something. But when you do play it, your rating is going to go up 150 points. Now I'm a little groggy. Uh, maybe I didn't explain that right, but I try to be I try to be precise. So f5 is a move I wouldn't play. Why? Well, I, I look at weaknesses. We're creating weaknesses here. But now we look at it a little further. Where's this knight going to go? Okay. Well, he could go down here and he gets pinned, okay? 
He can't go to G5. He could go to G6, G3. That's about the only place he can go, unless I'm blind. And then I guess the knight can get back into play. So, And meanwhile, the king can step up and cover the weaknesses. So, you know, the... You know, it's about an even game. You know, I mean, I, the grandmaster's not making moves I would, but he's the grandmaster, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so here we see exactly what I predicted. Now he's looking for trades. Okay, so instead of sending this guy out, he's on a good a good post right now. Um, one potential move is to play a four. The idea behind this is you want to restrain the pawns. Uh, of course, that might enable Black to get rid of his double pawn. So, what? You know, knights are wonderful. Can we get an outpost? Yeah, we have this square here that was weakened. So, uh, let's try to let's try to bully our knights into that square. How do we do that? Well, one way is to go back here. Well, we're, well we have something loose down here too. I've been paying attention to that. Ooh, White, White's going to lose a pawn. I'm just saying, if, if White can get a couple of... Whoops. What happened? Are they playing another one? Don't do that to me. Uh, he must be playing somebody else. Okay. Oh, his exhibition is over. Okay, so we'll move on. All games are over. Uh, this is not my game. Not my, not my in my program here. So, somehow we lost a game. It, it disappeared. It, when he started that one, it wiped the other one out. I'm sorry. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay, this one was a ended up being a uh, three-minute game because somebody didn't send the proper challenge. Okay, so you don't get your game covered. Okay, now this one we covered up here. Yeah, this one's covered. So it looks like this one ended. Uh, I'll cover that. So I'm sorry about the one game getting wiped out. It just ruin things. Let me uh, unfollow him if I can. I don't want another game to get wiped out. Uh, how do I do that? I've never, never unfollowed somebody. Okay, let me let me go into my settings. Jam Sam Chess moves. Hey, it lasted 30 minutes. Wow. Okay, now can I un can I unfollow? Uh, I'm already followed. Let's see if I click that. Maybe, maybe it'll work. Now I made me follow him again. Dang it! Ugh. Well, I just wiped out Friday the 13th game. Sorry. Uh, I will uh, endeavor to find out whose games I didn't cover and make a separate video. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm learning things, too. <coughs> Okay, so let's go through this game, and we'll call this one a day. Okay, so, yeah, we looked at this earlier in this opening. Yeah, this, this is an interesting one where Black was grabbing all this space on the queen side. Now, what finally happened? You know, where are the pawn breaks going to be? Okay, nice square for the knight. I wouldn't want to be white or black here, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, finally have an exchange. Uh, and he's headed for back here. Of course, he's grabbed this square. Okay. So, neither side still has a good bishop. You know, you know, White's got the better bishop because of all those pawns on light squares. But Black's bishop is is kind of crummy, too. Um, F6 is a glaring outpost, but how do you get a knight there? How do you, you know, maybe you can find a way to get the queen there, but how, you have to get rid of this. So, you know, it, it, chances look about even here. Now, here, uh, okay, uh, this might be a little premature. You know, you, okay, you're playing the Grandmaster. Make him prove that he can win this. Just sit on this game. Okay, let's Let's transfer this rook. Let's put this rook here and maybe put this rook over here. Now, that's just an idea. And then, then send your time over here. Just kind of swish, swish back and forth. 
and make white prove that he can break something open. Because white's not going to break open the queen side. He can only break, enough to king, break open the king side. And when he breaks open the king side, if your rooks are primed and ready to go over there, uh, you know, you might be the one that gets the checkmate. Just an idea. Okay, so it might be a little premature. You're always doing what I say. Oh, how about that? So you think, you're think thinking like I do. You know, you got the right ideas. Okay, so... <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get those games back. There's probably a way, uh, get, if I look in, in his archive, I'm going to try. Uh, I hate to miss them. I've got time on this video. So now, it, let's back up one or two quick here. So here, here, white is trying to break of his own. So black has done what I said, sent everything over here. And now, surprise, uh, white's saying, you know what? You send everything over there. I'm going to break in over here. So maybe sending the queen over wasn't the right idea because you know you don't have any open lines. The only break that black has is g5. And he's not ready for it. So now he comes back. Okay. So now, wow, look at look at how everything's locked up. Uh, there's one open file, the A file, and white controls it. And black is coming over to Defend that. And white's black's looking at the trades. And white's looking to stay on the A file. Okay, whoopsie, we have a we have a little problem down here. Uh, there's a check on F8 at some point. And how about this point? And now black black's game collapses. So probably you're moving too fast. Let's now, let's just kind of look at the clock here. See, you know, you're you're playing you're playing blitz chess. You still have 13 minutes to finish the game, uh, and you're at move 40. So, uh, if you spend 30 seconds a move, uh, you're good for another 40 moves. Okay, right? Let's see. 10 minutes is 600 seconds. Um, okay, 15 seconds a move, we'll say. You're good for another 40 moves. Uh, 20 seconds a move, you're good for, you know, you're good for, you, you do the math. <laughs> you, know, you, you had time, you had time on your clock to, to, to play this out, to find better moves. So now you're going to get, you're going to get, popped here. Your pawn structure is falling apart. And everything is collapsing. There goes another pawn. And another pawn. Now if black can find a way to get his queen here, he wins. But that's two moves away and white is checking. And at this point black decided that was enough. So he had a good game, just a little too quick there in the end. Okay. So now let me see if I can figure out how to get these other games here without giving up. Let's see. Uh, archive. That's my archive. I want his archive. Uh, where'd he go? Here he is. Okay, we want... Where's his archive? Message, chat, remove friend, observe game, report, archive. Aha! Okay, I'm finding them. Okay, so now I can get these games back that I lost, that I misplaced. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right, that, that makes me happy that I found these missing games. Okay, so this was that Philidor defense. And let's see. Where did I leave off? Maybe a left off just before here. So, you know, white is grabbing an outpost. Um, black has the bishop pair, but this bishop isn't doing much. He's hemmed in by a bunch of pawns. Uh, so here, 
White says, I want, I'm going to give you a bishop here, but I'm going to take the two knights. I love knights. They're such cool pieces. They move so unlike all the other ones. Okay, so two nice looking knights. If black takes, he's going to have this really crummy bishop left over. And white's knight is invulnerable, and he does. So how do you get rid of this knight? Well, you have to give up the exchange. Uh, so that knight is 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 a is permanent for for uh, white. Now white can just start increasing his pressure. You know, start for a break down here. All kinds of good strategies. Let's see what the grandmaster does. He'll teach me something. Okay, so making one move threat. Probably I'll play king b1. Yep. Okay. Had to save his bishop. Now, where's white's break going to be? I say it's going to be here. Well, he's preparing it slowly. And he's going to maybe try to lateral, lateral attack. Yeah, lateral. Okay. Now, here, strategically, this is probably wrong because it's not a move I would play because, uh, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the, the times here, you know, because it's going to lead to an immediate weakness. So what would I do? Maybe, well, maybe I have to. Uh, yeah, you probably, you probably have to. Uh, you know, the queen looks like it's just going to get in trouble if it comes over here. Uh, although, yeah, we could play b4 and threaten to play this. So here, white says, I'm not going to double your pawns. I think your queen's in bad shape. So maybe he'll, he'll try to trap that some other way and maintain his pressure down the center. So maybe black at some point, since I said this might be white's break, he'll... he'll he might want to bring this queen back, get some air for the queen. Now, this is an attempt to um, to expand this bishop's scope, but it's probably a little too early. Now, let's see. Well, you know, it's difficult here. This is under attack. If you push the pawn, it makes this bishop worse, but your and your bishop kind of functions as a pawn, but uh, and it does give white. You know, a clear path, maybe even later with his king into the position, but the queen can penetrate. It's a tough situation for black. So, if anything, he's going to drop a pawn, but he doesn't want it. Uh, I guess because of the check down here, but he just fixes this pawn on this square where it could be, become a target. Okay, tripling up. Now he goes back. So, so White is in no hurry here. He's just kind of biding time. And, you know, Black is Black is playing well, but the Grandmaster has too many advantages here. You know, this this weak pawn here, uh, this bad bishop. And there he takes. He steals again. A little tactic. Now White's up two pawns. And let's see. If you trade down here, there's going to be a fork at the end. Oh, there's even that instead. More decisive. Very nice. Okay. Uh, if pawn takes, which is impossible, so the king has to move. Uh, now let's see. I'm just going to win trade queens and win the rook, I guess. He could have done the other way. Let me, let me show you the other way. A little finesse here. I mean, he could have played. Oh, I mean, wait, that doesn't work. Okay, he's sending Grandma's just sending a message.
message. Okay, so now, uh, let's see. So I was wrong in my tactic. Uh, queen takes, rook takes, knight here is a fork, but it ha it hangs. Okay, so you know I say everything. Give me enough time, and I will. That's why I don't play blitz chess well. That's a very nice move. And now he picks up the exchange, and stuff stu stuff starting to drop, and black is running out of hope here. The white's holding on to everything. There he grabs a piece. So precision work by the grandmaster. That's why he's a grandmaster. I mean, this is not fair for us, okay? <laughs> I mean, if you ever saw my video with Tiger and Petrosian, when I played Tiger and Petrosian back in 1982, and he was like 50-some years old, and I never saw anybody run around a chess room as quick as that man did. It was just unreal. Uh, you know, we, we, we weren't allowed to pass. A lot of times in a simultaneous, if you if you're still trying to figure out, you can pass. Well, no, he showed up, you moved. If you didn't move, he just tipped the pieces over, and you lost. He, was, he wasn't going to play you, you know, you, you, you would forfeit. So, you know, you, you make a move, and you say, oh, what the hell do I do now? You know, ah, I don't know what to do. I'm in trouble. And what happens? He's back at your board. <laughs> He's back at your board. So the advantage, that's a live simul when he comes around in circles. Here you got time on the clock. You can He doesn't move until you do. So, anyway, uh, I was saying it's, it's just not fair how good these guys are. I mean, it, it's just amazing. I, I, I'm not good at uh, blitz chess, but but I can appreciate it. So now the game is going to wind up. And then let me get rid of this one. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm not watching that one. Okay, I don't even recognize that name. If it's somebody in my club, well, it came late. Okay, so let's see. Learning by doing. We covered that one. Okay, so there's one other game that I got. Whoopsie. Now I'll get it back. Okay, so let's see. How do I... I'm no longer following him. Well, I didn't mean to not follow you. I hope you're still in live chess. Uh, I think you are because you were playing the game. i got to get your archive. Okay. Now find the other game I missed. We've got a race. Okay. Remember doing Sam Chess King. I think it was... I think it was this one. Let's find out. Uh, maybe I no, this. Maybe we just didn't finish this one. He got in. No, wait. He got into the bishop ending. Okay, yeah, we looked at this one. And now, he, yeah, he forced the move the pawn. That was amazing. Okay, so I looked at that. Okay, now let's kill that one. Now I gotta. You know, I don't know. These things happen so fast. Wow. Just wow, all I can say. Okay, so let me think. Uh, now, all these people that played, uh, if you're watching this, for all these people that played the Grandmaster, they all have their own chess club at chess.com. I'm going to put the links to those, uh, uh, their clubs. They run activities of their own blitz, blitz tournaments. They're a lot of fun. These are good people. Uh, I have a lot of fun with them. Join their club and uh, and play against these guys. Play against their club members. You know, you get you, the more you play, the better you get. So I, I can't thank you, you know, thank you enough if you don't join their club. And again, in the YouTube description on this, there will be links. So let's see, I got to find his archive. So Chess King recovered. Uh, uh, let's see. Did we cover this one? No, this one. This one we didn't finish. Okay, now uh, I'm not sure where it left off. Okay, so let's see. This is the Con. Okay, so let's. Yeah, he was. Yeah, right. He was just. Yeah, this thing was in trouble. So I was talking about this game and weakening these squares, and I, this one I didn't finish. We're going to get it finished now. Let's see, let me flip the board. I had it up the other way, the other time. Okay. Right back. So we have a problem over here. I guess you can move it now, though. Um, it probably needs to do that.
Okay. I don't know who the last game he was playing was, but it was a 15-minute time control. Maybe he agreed to play it late. I'm sorry, you know, you didn't get here on time. I don't recognize the name. Uh, the B3 seems to be indicated here, because otherwise you're going to drop a pawn. So, knight here, he doesn't take it. Oh, he's counterattacking. Now you need to play... Well, now you can't play B3, you're going to drop this. So, uh, you know, the issue is you probably you probably move too fast. And, you know, you may be able to make some threats, but you're, you know, well, you found a way to get that defended, but, it, you know, your position is a little shaky here. Now the threat is to drive you away. So you're no longer protecting this pawn with your knight, preventing you from playing, which prevents you from playing B3. So I think this knight's going to get driven away. You've come up with some creative de uh, creative resources to uh, keep black from taking that pawn, but you're running out of time. Um, you know, now he just forced you away, see? And now you got the... Grandmaster got another pawn. You got both of them. So, <clears throat> now this knight is tied down to defending. And we'll go from there. You know, black is just up two pawns. Uh... And now the knight has no way out. Well, he has g6. And there's no way out from here. So, uh, I think, you know, the king is just going to come back and collect. Well, actually, you don't have to. The bishop is going to collect it. So, after a check, uh, we just play here. So, you got, you know, you kind of misplayed your knights here. Uh, and I love having two knights. But, you know, it... This is the critical phase. The critical phase is right here. It's okay to trade the rooks, but you have to play b3. Now, this pawn is still weak. You might be having to defend it. If he, uh, you know, he can pile up on it, redeploy the knight over to d5, perhaps, try to get the bishop on it. But but I, I have a feeling uh, white has some resources. And I mean, if you absolutely have to defend that, that weak pawn on c3, you know, then I can do it, you know, and, and then that'll give you time to run the king over and, and help out. But you had time on the clock. You guys all just moved too fast. I gave the advice not to, but you know what? I admit it. I move too fast. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've, and I just, ah, I see what I'm going to do. Boom, you know, and, and I think I'm winning, and then I go, oh, my God, look what I missed. You know, you, uh, you just have to learn. You know, you, you you, you tell yourself, I'm tired of this. That's what I did years ago. I said, I'm tired of losing games that I should be winning. What do I have to do? Well, i got to slow down. i got to think more. You know, it's... And when you do that, I'll give you an example. A uh, student I had a few years ago, I couldn't get him to slow down. Um, I talked to him. I talked to his mom. I talked to his dad. He wouldn't slow down. He wanted to play blitz chess in his 30-minute games. And, you know, I was, he would get these nice games and just mess them all up. And then we we're just ahead of our weekly lesson. He sends me a message. He says, Coach Bill, you know, I finally realized what you're saying. And I slowed down. And this week I played 14 games. I won 12, I drew one, and I lost one. You know, normally he would have won eight, lost five, and drawn one. Okay, or whatever. But just by slowing down, he changed the results. You know, the clock is your friend. It's not your enemy. But I thank everyone for watching this. Uh, again, the links to these uh, players is in the uh, in the club. I mean, in the YouTube description. And when I broadcast this on Twitch, I'll do my best to direct you to find it because they got these kids have some fun. They're kids. They have some fun clubs, and they play a lot of blitz chess. And and you know, look here, he's got a rating of 1961. That's probably more than I would have if I played Blitz Chess, okay? Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't know what that rating is, if that's his Blitz or his, his regular rating. I, you know, I don't know which one they post. But uh, nothing wrong with playing chess. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a great, it's the greatest game in history. And I thank everyone for watching, and uh, just stick around. I'll give you lots of good, good advice, and it's all free. Thanks again. Bye now.